In this video, we're going to look at lung cancer. This is an overview of lung cancer, an introduction. Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths. Cigarettes are the major cause of lung cancer. So what are some signs and symptoms of lung cancer? Well, a person can experience fatigue, sudden weight loss, shortness of breath, dyspnea, chest pain, persistent cough, and hemoptysis, which is essentially coughing up blood. So here I'm drawing blood in a sputum cup. There are many risk factors for developing lung cancer. These include cigarette smoking, which as I said is a major cause of lung cancer, nickel, arsenic, being exposed to constant air pollution, radon, tar, and having a family history or personal history of lung cancer. I also have not mentioned asbestos in this group. Lung cancer can be divided into two main groups. These are small cell carcinoma and non-small cell carcinoma. Let us first look at small cell carcinoma. Small cell carcinoma often presents already at its metastatic stage. The tumor often grows proximally close to the hilum. Small cell carcinoma also involve neuroendocrine cells, which we will talk about later. Now looking at non-small cell carcinoma, there are three types. Adrenocarcinoma is the most common type of lung cancer and involves gland cells such as goblet cells. Adenocarcinoma grows in the peripheral lung tissue. The other two types of non-small cell carcinoma are squamous cell carcinoma, which grows in the proximal lung tissue close to the hilum. And then there's also large cell carcinoma, which as the name suggests are large tumors. Large cell carcinoma can grow either proximally or in the peripheral lung tissue. If we were to take an x-ray of the chest of a person with lung cancer, here are some things that we could find. One, pulmonary opacity. This shows us the growth itself. Hilum enlargement. There can be presence of pleural effusion and even a collapsed lung, depending on how big the tumor is. Now some types of lung cancer can cause the cells of the lung to become neuroendocrine cells. The formation of neuroendocrine cells can result in a phenomenon known as paraneoplastic syndrome. So here we have a cancer cell which can become a neuroendocrine cancer cell. Neuroendocrine cancer cells are found in certain types of lung cancer in particularly small cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. Neuroendocrine cancer cells can release hormone-like substances. The main ones which I'll talk about are parathyroid hormone-like substance, ACTH-like substance, and antidiuretic hormone. Essentially, neuroendocrine cancer cells mimic other hormones that are produced normally by our body. So what do they do? Well, parathyroid hormone-like substance will target our bones. It will cause the bones to break down its minerals, releasing calcium into the bloodstream, thus increasing blood calcium levels, resulting in hypercalcemia. ACTH-like substance will stimulate the adrenal glands to produce more cortisol, resulting in stress and increased in sympathetic activity. ADH will target our kidneys and will stimulate the nephrons to reuptake water, thus increasing water retention. So that was an introduction to lung cancer. Thank you for watching.